Hey folks, Brett Kinsella here from voicebot.ai. You might know me from Synthedia. We talk about generative AI. We talk about conversational AI. And today we're talking about chat GPT plugins. Some of you know that I have alpha access to the chat GPT plugins model. And I want to do a couple things in this video. I want to show you how the chat GPT plugins work. So you have a sense of what that's going to be like when you get access. And we're going to do an example, which is flight booking, basically flight search and flight booking. Uh, there's also a couple of UX issues, which we'll point out. But in general, it's pretty interesting. So I want to bring it up. And I just recorded a screen recording of something I did a little bit a while ago. So first thing is up at the top. It, if you're in private browsing mode, incognito mode, it won't work. So you actually have to go into the non-private, the open mode. And then you can select the plugins model. And then from there, you can see there's a bunch of plugins that you can select. I've downloaded some. That's what you're looking at in that drop down. But then also, when you go in, you can actually select the different plugins that you want to have enabled. I've got a few of them enabled. And one of them is Expedia, because what I want to do is I want to talk about flights. However, there is another flight booking solution, Kayak, which also has a plugin. But you can see I cannot actually use both plugins at the same time because they're going to be conflicting. Maybe talk a little bit more about that. Yeah. So we'll just stick with uh, Expedia in order to start this process. I want to figure out what flights are available between LaGuardia and San Francisco. So I asked that question, and immediately what happens is ChatGTP's plugin model figures out which plugin I can use. In this case, Expedia is the relevant one, and it found a bunch of flights for me. So it's going to start answering this. It's going to put it out in terms of the the airline first, the time of departure. And the other thing I think some of you will know is there's this little button at the top, which basically says, which you can click to expand. It shows what the communication is between ChatGTP and the plugin. And there's some instructions at the end. You'll see that there's all sorts of data around the uh, responses it's pulling, but there's also instructions at the end of prompt priming, which is done by the plugin, which actually talks about the style that it's actually going to deliver the information to you in. So what I have here is I have three responses, all flights from SFO or from LaGuardia to SFO. It actually selected one month out for me. So June 3rd, because I didn't decide or didn't depict a date and it gave me this response and there's some multimedia down there at the bottom. So multimodal, we have images. Uh, but I go up to the top and I was just like, okay, well, let me see with that flight. And you can see that on June 3rd, it pulled up the right search page for me in Expedia. I could select one of those and go through the e-commerce or purchase process. Okay, so then I want to go back in and say, okay, could I update this? Maybe June 3rd wasn't right. I forgot to put it in. I want to fly on May 25th. And, oh, by the way, that's a one-way ticket that you just gave me. Maybe I'd like a round trip. And so tipped in the round trip and for June 1st. Okay, so what happens next? Well, first thing that happens, I have to scroll down a little bit, should auto advance here. All right, so there is an error. You can see that coming up on the screen. Uh, it apologizes the plugin can't do round trip uh, tickets right now or can't do round trip flights. And so what it's doing is it's actually understanding what that error is and saying, oh, well, let me at least solve part of your problem and get you that departure time or the departure flight options for May 25th. And so we see that coming down. We'll do a little expansion here again. I want to just point out a couple of things to you. Or one thing in particular is when you look at the instructions now, and I'll highlight that, uh, it now says May 25th for the, the departure date. All right, so we'll close that. And we'll look at the generation that's coming down here. The Again, now we're seeing different airline options. It's a different day. It's, it's looking for different options that it's trying to line up for me. And you'll see that it gives the price, the time, all very useful in this chat interface. I actually really like this. And it's asking me, what do I think about this options? I can ask additional questions. Um, but I glossed over it before that we have this little tray of icons. Those actually refer back to each of those responses for May 25th flights between LaGuardia and, uh, and San Francisco. And so it actually updated the whole search. I have new, new solutions that I can select there. 
All right, so just a couple things on this. So first of all, what did we see? We saw like how plugins will work. The plugins are not going to work if you're in private browsing mode, incognito mode, the new uh, ChatGTP solution. Uh, so you have to be basically open or public browsing. Then you can select the ChatGPT plugin module, and then you can you select which plugins that you want to have active. You can only have three active at any given time. And if you have more than one plugin that solves the same problem, in this case, we had Expedia and Kayak, you can only have one at a time. And that's a little bit of a UX issue. I just mentioned this on the Gain live stream, which we do generative AI news rundown every Thursday at 12 noon Eastern time. And I was talking about the conversation I had with a couple of the Siri co-founders last week, Adam Chire and Doug Kitlaus, who were really deployed this whole model back. Siri is an app before it went into the iPhone where they had all these different backend services. And then when they did Viv Labs and Bixby, they did this again. And they mentioned that there's going to be some UX issues. And I think this is one of them. And one of the things Doug Kitlaus pointed out was conflicts. How do you assess or how do you deal with conflicts between competing services in the space? And right now, the way that OpenAI is doing this, the quick and dirty way to do it is just don't allow you to select those two that compete at the same time. So you actually have to choose one. Now, I would like for this all to be in the same model, like the chat GPT-4 model, and then just figure out which plugins I want and bring that up. Uh, we're not there. You have all these other type of UX issues you have to go through. You have to select the model and go there. But still, it's really cool. So just a month ago, or right now, for most almost everybody, you can only have these chat interfaces, which is goes back to September 2021 data. You don't have real-time access to the internet. It's just text. And now we're actually seeing with plugins, it's multimodal. You have images. It goes to live data on the internet. It can integrate with an e-commerce experience. And it's going to be a real incentive for a lot of companies to build these plugins and to reach out to the 100 million plus monthly active users on ChatGTP. Let me know what you think about this. Ask questions in the comments below. I really look forward to hearing from you. And if you want to see more demos like this, subscribe to the Synthedia newsletter. It's a daily newsletter. We show demos, data, news on a daily basis. It's a free newsletter. Uh, just go to bit.ly forward slash Synthedia. I hope to see you there. All right, everyone. Bye-bye.